hard work. It means, it means stories that we don't see in the LA Times, we can see on the site. Looking forward to it. Okay, Tamar, where's Tamar? Tamar Gallatin. Tamar, come on up here. Who knows Tamar? You registered voter? Okay. Uh, Find her position. She is uh, assistant to the city attorney, but not tonight. Tonight she wears a different hat. Um, the, uh, she is also a member of the Los Angeles uh, School Board. Uh, and I read in the paper that you've been targeted by uh, some union organization. Anyways, can you give us an update on what's happening with the school board? And I think you have a request for some people here. No, about my angle. No. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Gallatin. Um, I am a member of the Los Angeles School Board. It is, uh, it's been almost four years, so there is going to be another election in March, uh, and I am up for re-election, so uh, I hope to get your support. The last three and a half years has been very uh, challenging at OUSD. Obviously, we've had the budget crisis that has impacted the city and the state and the county and the feds. What that has meant to LA Unified in the last two years, Sacramento has cut the district's budget over $1.5 billion. And we are looking over the next two years at almost another billion dollars worth of budget cuts. So Don't with that in yes. mind, uh, one of the things that I felt really strong way about is one of the things that we're doing at the district, we're pushing money down to schools so the, the money can be spent at the schools and in the classrooms. That's really nice, except for a lot of the schools that I represent, including, for example, all the elementary schools in Sherman Oaks, they don't have any disposable income that you can push down. Uh, there's not a lot of money at those schools, and if it wasn't for the parent fundraisers, the schools, some of them wouldn't have toilet paper. Uh, so this year, for the first time ever, uh, all of the schools um, in the district that are considered non-Title I, including all of the elementary schools here in Sherman Oaks, got an extra $85,000, even in this budget situation, in order to spend it on things that they need, which is usually personnel at their school. Um, and that has been something that has been really important to me. The reason I ran, and a lot of you have seen my kids who are walking around today, they're both LAUSD students. I'm the only person on the school board who actually has kids in the school district right now. And I think it's really important that you know middle class families like me who live in the valley are able to send their kids to public school. And uh, I have been a voice for those parents and I will continue to be no matter uh, how loud this election gets, that is an important constituency. It's families just like me, like a lot of you were, a lot of your kids and grandkids are now, and we have to make sure that this school district is providing for all of the families in Los Angeles. So that's why I ran, and that's why I am running for re-election. You're a masochist. Uh, Deputies that are here, uh, representing elected officials, if you can come up and introduce yourself. And um, why don't we also have uh, what are, what are you John Eisen come up as well. For what? So if you're so any, any elected yeah. official representatives that are here that want to introduce themselves, come on up. Here we go. Uh, my name is Jason Levine, Sherman Oaks native. I represent I'm here with Senator Fran Pavley's office. Um, I'd like to thank SOHA for having, for, for doing this every month. It's a valuable service to the community, uh, feeding Italian food to. No, 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 no that's customers. not what we do. Feeding is just incidental. <laughs> my second favorite Italian restaurant, right, Matt? Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Okay, who's going to speak? We'll uh, start with an update from uh, Paul Koretz's office. Councilman Koretz, who wants to give that? We're coming together. You share Hello, the same everybody. time. We, did. we will share the same time. Hi, everybody. Uh, Joan Pellico with Councilmember Paul Koretz. Uh, as you know or you don't know, I actually became district director for the council district, so I do cover both areas now, west side and the valley, and I oversee both offices. So, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. But anyway, so your new field deputy is Wes Hernandez, 
and he's going to be taking care of you in Sherman Oaks, and he already has, so he will let you know what he's been doing. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you for having me this evening. It's great to be here. I was here last month, but I was unable to speak. Sorry about that. Um, just a quick bio about me. Born and raised in San Fernando Valley. I'm a UCLA graduate, and I'm currently finishing my uh, Master's in Public Administration at Cal State Northridge. I've done it about three weeks, so that's exciting. I'm um, excited to serve the Sherman Oaks community, and I can't wait to work with all of you in order to improve Sherman Oaks. Uh, I can be reached at 818-971-3088. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to contact me at the Valley Office. Thank you. Thank you. So if anyone has any problems whatsoever within Councilman Koretz's office, uh, district rather, you're the problem solver. I'm the go-to guy. You're the go-to guy. Okay, you heard it. Okay, uh, next, uh, Pat Davenport. Uh, from Councilman Koretz's office. Actually, I'm from Councilman Paul Krikorian's Krikorian office. Did I say? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's confusing. Even we get confused. We, we all call so. him PK. You have two Pauls, Paul Krikorian, Paul Koretz. Both last names start with K. So we call him PK1, which is, uh, oh, some people call it Council District 2 and Council District 5. Okay, so, so you're, you're... I'm here on okay. behalf of PK2 for Council District 2. And um, I have two things that I have brought and have flyers over on the table for, and I'm hoping you'll pick them up. Uh, the first is uh, called Thanksgiving Drive for uh, non-perishable foods for our various food banks. And we're collecting at three offices across the district, and then we're going to take them to food banks in those communities. So the food that we collect at the North Hollywood office will go to the church on the corner of Colfax and um, Moore, Moore Park, First Christian, because they operate out of there the food bank that serves across the south part of the valley. So that's what we're going to be doing, and we do hope to get, uh, we are already got a great collection started, but we would love to have more help on that. All the demands are up. Uh, too many people who are just unemployed, temporarily unemployed, underemployed, are now having to go to food banks that never had to before. So we really hope to do something with that. The other is a more detailed little folder, and I really hope you pick it up and do some serious reading and pass it along. It is about the issue of painting crosswalks versus corners where there's no painted crosswalk. More importantly, more urgently, on the back are 10 tips for how to cross the street and get out of it alive. Because it's dangerous, it's yep. increasingly dangerous. Drivers are distracted, pedestrians are distracted, people drive too fast. So hopefully we get this word out and we can save a child's life by teaching them how to cross safely. Those are two things I want to just put one more word in because we did have the folks here from uh, Bevis and Albert Street about the cell tower. Uh, Paul's office has been hearing them and getting a lot of information. It has been a crash course for, I think, everyone in the office on uh, what is really a, it's such a fast-changing area. It is very difficult right now for the city to do anything. What we have found other council members have attempted has pretty consistently failed, and the, they have gone, the uh, installations have gone in. So what we are trying to find is a strategy that will actually work. We are trying to find a way. We have gone to the federal government twice in the past. The city has had their uh, legislative agenda include trying to get these rules changed. Both times we were turned down by the federal government. This is a challenging issue and it will not resolve itself probably instantly or quickly, but it, we are looking very hard for a way to be effective in Thank this you. issue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John Eisen. According to the bylaws of the association, each year we have a procedure for election of board of director members. And so if anyone's interested in this high paying position, <laughs> uh, please see me and I'll tell you the details of the procedure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is Stephanie Johnson here? S Stephanie Johnson? Okay, um, let's 
just want to make sure everyone knows from the newsletter, there is no December meeting or newsletter because of the holidays. Uh, but the next event is going to be the December 5th toy drive. Hopefully, hopefully everyone has picked up the flyer with the red uh, border around it with all the details. Uh, we need to collect a lot of toys. There's a function that is held by the county and we supply all the toys. Once they run out of toys for that event, that's the end of it for that event. So we need your participation December 5th, Ralph's Market in the front, and uh, uh, Pat Davenport says that we're gonna have what, fire engines and police cars and all that stuff. And just remind the, remind the officers that uh, the assistant chief, Michael Moore, will be there. So uh, I'm sure they want to meet with their assistant chief, the number two person. Also, uh, you'll see from the newsletter, there's a lot of other elected officials, including uh, Wendy Gruel, who will be attending. Um, let's see. Um, finally, uh, Marshall Long, update on planning and development issues. Here you are, Marshall. You're on. Yeah, big time. Don't, don't miss Santa Claus at the, uh, the tro to toy drive. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, could Matt uh, leave the room? Matt is on the, uh, South, is on the City Planning Commission, therefore sh should not listen to anything that's being said here because it is highly confidential. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't have the clearance. Uh, first, uh, we're a little short staffed tonight, uh, so I'll try to fill in for some of the committee chairs who aren't here, uh, but uh, th they would do a much better job than I. Uh, we are fortunate to have Jay Weitzer here, who is the Ralph's committee chair, so he will step up and, and his supporters. <laughs> <laughs> nice to get a hand. As you may know, the, uh, we lost the, our objections to the Ralphs project at the Planning Commission hearing, and we did file an appeal on behalf of the residents of the community to go before the Planning and Use Management Committee. Uh, the next hearing is, aptly enough, on Pearl Harbor Day at 10.30 on December 7th. Uh, since we don't have a meeting during, the, uh, during December for Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association, anybody who's interested in having anything to say in opposition or I suppose in support of the project should appear down downtown at 10.30 in the morning on December 7th and they can see me for any address. We have some concerns. We'd like them to address the possible concern of increased traffic and keep some funds aside if any uh, streets have to be widened or restriped, any uh, sig traffic signals have to be put up. We have security concerns. We have concerns about the height of the building and of course the size of the building, which is now up to 80,000 square feet instead of the 29,000 square foot building that's there now. So if you have any objections to the project, and I think a lot of you probably do, feel free to contact me. I'm sitting over there next to the person who clapped for me, my wife. Um, and I'll be there until the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you.